Welcome, viewership of the infamous gentlemen, to infamous Dungeons and Dragons. We have assembled and we are about to go on a quest, an epic adventure for your viewing pleasure and your entertainment. This has been a project long in the making and one which we are delighted to bring to you at your viewing screens at home. I, of course, am the Bard. I am joined by the Sprite, the Doctor, the Boy and the Dragon, all of us here together to play D&D and we are incredibly excited to do it. Now, this has been a labor of love, but it has been a significant investment in time, money, technical expertise, and just overall effort. So if you're enjoying the content, if you like the D&D video, tell us in the comments, like the video, share it with your friends who are also maybe interested in watching lunatics play Dungeons and Dragons. Make sure you spread this as widely as you can and let us know if you want us to keep doing it. We would love to, but we would literally appreciate your support and to let us know that you enjoyed it as well. Now... Let's just begin, I suppose. The premise of our Dungeons & Dragons game will be as follows. I will kick off, give us the opening to our epic quest, our campaign, and then thereby the other players will introduce themselves and their characters. So, allow me to paint a picture for you, viewership. Catastrophe has befallen the Duchy of Eastmark. Harald, the youngest son of the ailing Duchess, has been kidnapped by the villainous Fortinbras the Thrice-Blooded. Distraught, the aging Duchess dispatched her household knights to Cragspire Keep to rescue her boy. But that was two days ago, and the only thing to leave Cragspire is black columns of smoke and the screams of dying men. All this plays in your mind as you pause at the dusty crossroads. To the north, Cragspire Keep broods in the distance, its walls blackened, its battlements scarred, but its gates open. The cool, dusky breeze sends smoke downwind, the air is scented with soot, the dying aromas of a long summer, and the promise of adventure. Our party finds itself at a dusty crossroads in the valley preceding Cragspire Keep. Hopefully, via the magic of editing, you can in fact see Cragspire Keep as this large castle. And now using our roving camera, which hopefully will work, I can pan over our table to show the party. So hopefully we can see the party situated thusly on the dusty crossroads. The roads leading north to Cragspire Keep itself. There are various other things around the landscape which we will pursue and which the party can investigate shortly. But in the meantime, before we even get started, can, please, Doctor, you can begin. Who is your character and what draws him here to these dusty crossroads? So, I will be playing Terminus, the robot artificer. He's had a troubled past and most of it is gone from his memories. But he had recently had a tip-off that someone who's resident at Cragspire Keep may have the key to unlocking the memories of his former life. Fascinating. Let's move on then to the boy. Boy, what brings your character here and who are they? Well, tis I, Talamanca, the uh, swashbuckling rogue lizard folk, who has spent a long proportion of his life raiding at sea, following troubled past at home, and now sees opportunity for power, wealth, or perhaps figuring out some solutions to those problems at home and we'll join the party to figure out where to go forward. Brilliant. I now move to the Sprite. The Sprite playing one of my favorite Dungeons & Dragons races, but I'll let her explain that. Sprite, who is your character and what are they doing here? I am Soldred. I am a centaur ranger, and I am essentially here as a fey folk because the capture of small children is evil elf work, and I'm here to stop the, the capture of children in the most noble of deeds, despite being a aggressive, fighting, angry, ridiculous, and swearing, and I can't pull off the accent, but Scottish character inspired by Discworld. <laughs> Outstanding. Uh, so you're I mean, essentially the... Shrek with horse legs. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, I want to see this character fusion now. <laughs> I'm, I'm so excited to have a centaur in one of my games. Now, I finally move to the dragon. What is the dragon's character and what is he doing here? We have not allowed the dragon to play as an actual dragon because that's not how D&D works. But Disappointing. Dragon. Yep. So my character's name is Dagmar. Dagmar Guthrilson. He's he's a northern dwarf uh, from, from, from the Pennines. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, he is he is a, a paladin of um, uh, of the dwarven god Gorm. So Gorm is a god of protection, and uh, as part of his church, he has been dispatched to buy, provide protection to the uh, unlucky Prince Harold. But uh, sadly, he he has uh, not done so well in his uh, quest of protection. He's uh, <laughs> uh, his charge has been uh, carried away off into the night. So it is his uh, sacred duty to to fight back and return um, 
the princeling Harold to uh, the city of Eastmark. Wonderful. Excellent character introductions. Now, the party finds itself at these dusty crossroads. Before they proceed, does anyone have proficiency in knowledge history? Yes. Terrific. What is your intelligence modifier, Terminus? Uh, it is plus three. Plus three. I will allow Terminus to make three knowledge rolls, because he's intelligence modifier plus three, about the situation that he finds himself in. So he could roll about on Fortinbras, who is the villain who has abducted young Harald. He could roll to find out more about Harald and his family. He can learn about the surrounding countryside, or he can learn about Cragsbar Keep itself. I'll let him roll for three separate instances to find out more about the situation based on his knowledge. I think we'll start off attempting... To, we'll try the roll for Cragsbar Keep. Okay. Make me a knowledge history roll, please. Ooh. That's a 13. A 13. He doesn't know a great deal about Cragsbar. He knows that it's an ancient fortress built during the Unification Wars. Previously, it was occupied by a group known as the Black Cabal. It has long since been disused, or in disuse, but he doesn't know much about the keep other than it's very old, and it was occupied by a group called the Black Cabal. Cool. Um... What was there was one about Prince Harald and then there was something else. Prince Harald, uh, Prince Harald and his family, the surrounding countryside, and Fortinbras. So Fortinbras is the man who has abducted yeah. Harald and who has now taken him to the castle. We'll try Fortinbras next. Really oh knowledge. no, that's that's even worse. That's a nine. <laughs> nine. You're pretty sure he's a bad dude. <laughs> uh, so. Uh, you don't know anything about Fortinbras, unfortunately, so you're aware that he has a sinister reputation, that he is a criminal, but, I mean, just stealing the Duchess's son, kidnapping her son, would be more than enough to prove that in and of itself. You don't really know him. For the context of the viewership, the way this works is they all have skills, their characters have skills and abilities, and they will roll to determine how good they are at a particular thing in a particular instance. Generally speaking, if you get a result of a 10, that's about what a peasant, an average person, could accomplish in a situation. A 15 is something that only someone with skills or training could accomplish in that situation. A 20 is at the very limits of what a human being could realistically achieve. Anything above 20 is something superhuman. As you approach 30, reality just breaks to accommodate what your, char what your character <laughs> Gods, wants basically. to do. Yes, you, you, you do something which breaks the laws of reality as you approach a roll of a 30. So, uh, for example, an athletics check of a 15 might allow you to leap over a running river... An athletics check of a 20 might allow you to pick up a horse. An athletics check of 30 allows you to break through a solid stone wall with your face and break down the <laughs> building around it. <laughs> Excellent. Cool. Based on this information, then, well, you, one final roll. You don't know anything about oh, yeah. Fortinbras. Uh, I think um, Prince Harald and his family will try. Okay. Roll me a knowledge history check. Ah, oh, that's more like it. That's a 20. Oh. That's a 20. So, much of this is also known to Dagmar. Dagmar is in the service of Harald and his family. So, Harald is the third son of Duchess Katerina. Katerina, of course, governs the province of Eastmark. She is generally wise and respected. However, her advanced age has meant that the duchy has begun to decline, and there are growing tensions with dwarven clans. So, the trade routes that normally are well protected by her men have started to become more hazardous of late, and the security of our duchy has started to decline owing to Katerina's advanced age. Hence, perhaps, why someone was audacious enough to kidnap her own son. Someone about whom we apparently know. Fuck off. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a mysterious character. <laughs> does, anyone else, like... does anyone else have knowledge yeah. his, history? So I have, I have proficiency in history. Uh, Terrific. Plus one. I would like to make a, a role much as Terminus did on either the countryside or the situation or on any of the key actors, depending what you'd like to Ooh. roll on. Can, can we have a go with uh, Fortinbras if, if we know some more about him? You sure can. Roll me a knowledge history check, please, on Fortinbras. Okie dokie. Uh, oh, I got a nine. <laughs> Fuck's sake. <laughs> Fortinbras is a snake. International yeah. man of mystery, Fortinbras. <laughs> so uh, as, as Terminus the Warforged is explaining the situation, like, oh, yeah, this is the context. I've, I've heard of Fortinbras. I can try. He's a bad man. Dagmar will lead in like, yes, he he's a bad man. <laughs> <laughs> that is very, he's got minus one intelligence, so that is very in character. <laughs> Fantastic. Fantastic. If anyone else has knowledge history, I'll allow them to make one roll. Uh, otherwise, this is the information that you have going in, and then I will describe the landscape in more detail, and you can determine a course of action. Alas, there is no pr proficiency for Soldred, unfortunately. He does not have proficiency with history. Now, I'll describe the landscape using the cam. So, the party finds itself here at the dusty crossroads. Further down the road, there are what appears to be a disused and decrepit-looking boneyard some distance off. Further up, very, very close to the party, there's a group of individuals who are clustered around a small campfire littered with kind of barrels and tents and general camping paraphernalia. 
Following the road northwards towards Cragspire Keep itself. I'll get a nice shot of Cragspire. Here you are. That is what the fortress looks like. There is a small crofting house with some kind of strange structures near the back of the crofting house. A small farm or croft, hopefully you can see. Further away, beyond the camp, the camp party can see, there is a ruined watchtower, clearly in a state of great disrepair towards the kind of... Let me get this right as I orientate myself properly. This would be to the east of the party, following the road that you can see thusly. Now, if anyone would like to spot or determine what they'd like to do with these types of things, what would the party like to do? That's what they can be seen in the immediate environment. They can be investigated further or spotted from a distance. What would the party like to do? J just a quick question about the time scale. Like, is this immediately after uh, the kidnapping, basically? Or... Two days, wasn't it? Two days. Oh, sorry, yeah. It has been two days since Harald has been kidnapped, and the situation is the Duchess has dispatched her knights to retrieve her boy from the fortress. However, that was two days ago. They have not been seen or heard from since, so it is uh, assumed. I they assume we can tell this fairly well from distance. I'm assuming that bl band of blokes around the camp campfire are not the Duchess's knights. Roll me a perception check, please, Terminus. Oh, that's not going to be great. <laughs> uh, that would be a ten. A ten. At this distance, it's very difficult to tell. The kind of dusky light is making it difficult for you to peer through the growing twilight in order to make out the figures. You can tell that one of them is clearly humanoid, but vast in stature, so close to, to me, 10 or 12 feet tall. The rest of them seem to be kind of humanoid figures of varying sizes, but with a roll of a 10, that's all you can make out at this stage. Well, they sound quite th potentially threatening characters, don't they, really? Um, I wonder if I could maybe have a closer look with my lizard eyes <laughs> uh, to see if I can establish more. Certainly, ta can Talamanca roll me a perception check? Now, right. generally speaking, if the party is trying to perceive something, I will only let two players roll. Otherwise, you could just keep rolling perception checks invariably until you had all the information. So when you perceive something, I'll let two players roll. Glad I started with my minus one to perception. <laughs> <laughs> I have fucking 12, you prick. Okay, Ed, that would be a 17 plus four, which is 21 for my perception check. A 21? Talamanca's got a sharp lizard eyes, is he? Kind of scaly moves his way around, getting a better vantage. <laughs> vantage point. He, he, he slithers up the side of Terminus's body to kind of peer off into the middle. Oh, of this I'm, I'm not okay with this. <laughs> so, at this distance, he could clearly see that there. Could you a, even see it? Probably oh, not. He couldn't see it this distance, or certainly Terminus failed to see it this distance. But Salamanca, with a roll of twenty-one, he can see pretty much everything there is to be seen. So there's a loose cluster of tents and some barrels arranged in a circle by a campfire. Specifically, there is one dwarven figure who is heavily armed and seems to be bearing a crossbow. There is a large ogre with a huge gut, and moreover, there is some kind of small diminutive creature perched on the ogre's shoulder. There are two humans, one of whom seems to be moving barrels back and forth, and finally there is a heavily armed halfling who is wearing a gigantic sword, a disproportionately large sword, almost larger than the halfling is, resting against his shoulder. Uh, moreover, you can tell that something's a bit unusual, that this campfire is gigantic, so the campfire is bigger than would be necessary to warm a group of this size, even accommodating for the huge ogre. Can you please roll me an insight check, Talamanca? Can indeed. Uh, that would be a, uh, a one plus two. <laughs> 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 okay, with an insight roll of a one, so a, natu a roll of a natural one. Okay, uh, with the way I play Dungeons and Dragons and the way that like, I think Dungeons and Dragons is often best played, if you roll a 1, whatever you're attempting to do is automatically a fail. So no matter how good your character might be or how skillful, a 1 is always a fail and will often result in some kind of hilarious setback. So Talamanca kind of slithers back down and he's like, he's, he's convinced, Talamanca is absolutely certain that the ogre is Fortinbras. <laughs> <Cool>. <laughs> Okay, okay, guys, we need to go and kill it then. <laughs> this is so easy. <laughs> Literally, I'm presuming that halfling. Is it, I, I guess that uh, Harald is kind of small, right? Looks a bit like a halfling, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, for, for for this uh, hilarity and for like definitely role playing his character, I will award one point of inspiration to Talamanca. Now, the way inspiration works, if a player does something which is in keeping with what their character would do, or if they do something creative or cool, I basically give them a point of inspiration, which allows them to re-roll one dice result at a time of their choosing. So, for playing in character and for committing to the idea that his character believes that the ogre is Fortinbras, I will award Talamanca one point of inspiration. The worst thing is, yes. with our history checks, none of us have got any. I know, yeah, he might <laughs> be. We totally <laughs> believe him? <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, you're, you're fairly certain. This seems dubious. Even Talamanca himself kind of tails off a little bit. Like, perhaps not. <laughs> what, would, 
Based on this information, what would the party like to do? So you can see these are the individuals as described. It's a large campfire, although Talamanca, with his low insight, can't quite figure out why the campfire would be this way. What action from the party? Yeah, I mean Dagmar's not very smart. He's gonna, he's he's gonna come. At, he like, yeah, he's gonna go after them. I think, I, or, or at least I think investigate some more. Probably. Okay. I'm already Possibly drawing my bow. Oh, good. Here yeah. we go. <laughs> <laughs> okay, using the roving battle cam, we can now have. Dagmar will make his way towards the figures around the campfire, closely followed by, remind me, sprites, are the characters then? Soldred. Soldred, of course. There's Soldred as they move over towards the campfire. As you get closer, instantaneously, the kind of bearded, grizzled dwarf who's propped himself up in one of the barrels turns. And are you making any attempt to conceal yourself, or are you just walking right up to them? No, no. To be honest, Dagmar's <laughs> probably just going to be like, Vile fort and brass! <laughs> and hand my in charge! <laughs> okay, as, as, he as he advances towards the party, the, the dwarf with his crossbow immediately comes out and there's a ch ch as he loads the crossbow and he points it up. Like, with a little confusion in his eyes, he'll see it's a fellow dwarf, he'll bark out in dwarfish. Hear you! What's all this talk about Fort and Brett? And who the fuck's that centaur? What? What? Immediately, the, the ogre from the back of the camp will kind of raise like a huge club from like picking it up inside one of the tents. And it's only with a kind of wry smile that a figure with a low brimmed cap, one of the humanoid figures, one of the humans, will step to the fort. Now, friends, uh, seems like we got ourselves off on the wrong foot here. Now, why don't we just calm down, take a deep breath? and discuss this like civilized people. What action? Who are you calling civilized? <laughs> <laughs> roll a... Can a uh, soldier roll me an intimidation check, please? There it goes. Uh, 16. Uh, 19 total. 19. So, having seen that up close, this man is in a kind of long traveling cloak, and he seems to be carrying some kind of stringed instrument in his hands, which he was seemingly about to strum, but as you kind of call it, who you call like civilized, he drum, plays a wrong note. <laughs> well, um, um, well, sir, I don't think there's any call for violence, certainly, and he's like visibly retiring, he steps back a couple of steps. I don't think uh, anybody means any harm. Ain't that right, Cronar? God fucking damn it! And the crow <laughs> will, lower cro will lower his crossbow and spit to one side. Who are you? I am Soldred. I hunt evil. Uh, but I'm also putting my bow away because you're clearly not kitty catchers. <laughs> <laughs> They'll kind of look at one another side to side. The, the ogre, you notice, like, um, with his club, will kind of retire somewhat and kind of lower the club as well. So there's a, a certain de-escalation of the situation, given that impossibly high intimidation check. <laughs> 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 uh, we are, of course, the members of the, the Lucky Donkey Trading Company, and whilst we trade in spices and certain other oddities, we do not, in fact, deal in live people. Especially not, as you say, uh, children. Now, my companion here, Cronar, can be a little bit itchy with the trigger finger. Why don't you come join us? And he'll gesture towards the campfire. Ooh. How far yeah. away is this campfire? And can we conceivably, the rest of us from the crossroads, have been hearing this? Go oh down. yeah, definitely. So uh, th this is very much the map is to scale. So if you imagine, I'll just zoom in. Yeah. yeah well, you can see that's this is Dagmar here. So Dagmar is to scale. So he occupies like a five foot square area. So you guys may be like twenty or thirty feet watching this um, de-escalation of hostilities play out. Oh, okay. so you can definitely have definitely have heard all of the shouting. You, you know what's going on. You're being invited to join the campfire. Uh, I guess. Yeah. It's not Fort and Brass after all. <laughs> <laughs> Come join us! <laughs> <laughs> and Talamanca breathes Friends. a sigh of relief at that point. <laughs> <laughs> Slightly sheepishly. Outstanding. So, <laughs> hopefully visible on the camera, I will move the party now over yep. towards the campfire. Thank you. There are some strange looks which are cast at the Steel Defender, which is the animatronic contraption which follows Terminus everywhere in the shape of a gigantic spider. Hopefully, we have the capacity through editing to show you what this looks like. Ooh. But Terminus is like gigantic spider with <laughs> it stalks up behind him. Just so we're clear, I'm imagining the uh, clockwork character soldier from uh, Return to Oz. Oh, what, TikTok? Yeah. The fat one? He's not fat! <laughs> now this is more like, um... Oh, it reminds me, I, the one I kind of had in my head is, you know, like the, the, the attack droids from The Incredibles? Uh, with like the yeah, Doc yeah, Ock yeah. style like, legs coming out of like a ball. It's kind of what yeah. I had in mind. Anyway, so you drop a seat at the fire, like, uh, you can see that... Right, which of you... It's best to do is Dagmar. Can Dagmar roll me an insight check? Insight, yeah. Oh, I'm quite good at that. Uh, <laughs> he says, I got a six. <laughs> three plus three. For sake, I'm plus oh. two. 
Uh, as Dagmar kind of moves his head, like moves his kind of gaze around the campfire, taking in the heavily armored halfling, the large ogre figure. Uh, the ogre, by the way, like as a consequence, seems to be dressed in nautical dress, and there is a small goblin perched on the ogre's shoulder who seems to be wearing some kind of feathered cloak. Bizarrely. Now, as his eyes kind of fall on the, the dwarf, you can see that the dwarf is sitting there with the crossbow still loaded sitting across his lap. So the dwarf, whose name you now know is Kronar, and with a, a low insight, it's difficult to get a read on him. So you're not quite sure what clan he is from. You're not quite sure like what kind of dwarf he is, whether he's from a similar background to yourself. You, you can't get a read on him. Usually you'd be able to determine from speech and accent where a dwarf is from because you are a dwarf, but nah, you can't get a read on this guy. Where do you hail from, friend? Your name's Kronar, of the clan Ironshanks. You'll be a knowledge history check, please. With advantage, because Ironshanks, of course, Ooh. is a dwarven clan, and you are a dwarf. Amazing. When the player rolls with advantage viewership, they roll twice, and they pick the highest result on the dice. Is there a fancy way of doing that on D&D Beyond? No, you just roll you it, just twice. it twice. <laughs> okay, yeah. Okay. Oh, well, it's all right. I got 18 on the first one. But you could and get 20 on the second. Five, so, <laughs> yeah. Let's go <laughs> Not with, with 18. that attitude. <laughs> okay, so at 18, Clan Ironshanks is the ruling Dwarven clan. So Dwarves elect what's effectively a High King. Current High King of the Dwarves is a, of Clan Ironshanks. So they're a large, powerful, influential, and militaristic clan. It is unusual for one of them alone to be this far from one of their holds. Cool, so as the party sits down, like uh, there are various kind of... Uh, worth, worth the record as well. Um, in case that becomes relevant at this point, uh, Bard, I, I believe... I'm just trying to find actually where it is. Uh, yeah, so uh, Terminus also speaks Dwarvish. Oh, does he really? Okay. In, ca um, in case there's some... some do yeah, apparently <laughs> I speak Elvish and Dwarvish. What do you know? I will keep that in mind. He oblated his translation software. <laughs> Would. As the party draws up its seats, uh, who has the highest perception of the party? I have really good passive perception, and my standard perception is plus two. My perception is plus four. I think that'd be you then. Okay, um, in that case then. Can we have Talamanca and can we have Soldred roll me perception checks? You can, yes. I got a uh, 13 plus 4, which is 17. I got 17. Okay, both in 17. You both clock this then. That, again, this is bizarre that Campfire is much bigger than you would expect for a group of this size. Furthermore, you can clearly see that the second humanoid figure, the one who is moving barrels around, he's like kind of huge, beef chested sort of man, but like. The way he's drooling out the corner of his mouth and the kind of like <laughs> sort of noises he makes as he moves to and fro, <laughs> that this individual is obviously a halfwit. Moreover, like the small barrel that he's carrying looks really, really heavy for what should not be a large barrel. And as he puts it down, there's a metallic clang from whatever was inside the barrel, rattling. Obviously, something metal and heavy inside this barrel. Now, the atmosphere is a little strained because it did look like you were about to fight one another. However, the man in the kind of low brimmed hat with the traveling cloak, well, again, now, friends, are. Why don't we just all have a nice drink here? And he'll have a flask in his pocket. He'll unstop her flask and pass it around. Does anyone drink from the flask? I will um, pretend to drink, but use sleight of hand to um, hide it. Can I use sleight of hand to hide that? Oh, you're doing you like Aragorn with the, nas with the nasty fish soup yeah. and <laughs> two towers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is absolutely a thing that Soldred can do. Soldred, can you roll me a sleight of hand check? Oh, thank Christ. 16. <laughs> it hovered on four. <laughs> <laughs> I'll make a roll. So, with his low perception roll, this character does not spot as you, like, oh, you, you quaff some and spill a little. It looks as though it goes in your mouth to a casual observer, but you very much just kind of knock it down over Soldred's shoulder and rolls down his big horsey back. <laughs> I know, uh, he doesn't seem to have noticed. Uh, Soldred, are you just ha are you, are you continuing to pass the tankard around or the, the flagon? Or the, oh, yeah. The, the, yeah. The flask. The flask. Does anybody else drink from it? I don't need to drink, but it's unclear whether I actually even can if I wanted to. So I will. I will determine that uh, as as a warforged. So uh, for for the viewership, a warforged is basically like a fantasy mechanical man, which is what Terminus is. Terminus can eat and drink if he wants to. He is not required to. Okay. Can I investigate it? Just like just do a quick like. It, do, does it seem obviously poisoned or stanky or what is it like? <laughs> roll me an investigate. Roll me an investigation check. Wonderful it's really stanky. <laughs> <laughs> oh god, that would be a seven. A seven. You you stiff it, and there's a harsh, like very very sudden, fiery aroma that wafts into Terminus's mechanical nostrils. Could be anything. Okay, good. Uh, I'll take a sip. Okay, can Terminus roll me a Constitution saving throw? Oh, good. 
I also have advantage against being poisoned. That's <laughs> relevant. <laughs> it, 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 uh, that's, a, that's a 16. A 16. So Terminus feels this kind of fiery liquid kind of like wafted its way down his, I don't know, his intake tubes, I suppose, is maybe the best way to describe <laughs> his, you know, his th- And it, it burns as a kind of like sudden burning. It's not entirely unpleasant, but like he's tasted this before. This is whiskey. Uh, and he, yeah, he is undamaged. With a, he, he's able to kind of swallow insofar as a robot can swallow and like you're clapped heartily around the shoulder with like a dull clang <laughs> as the, the stranger says, well Fred you can certainly handle your liquor and he'll take the, the flask back now you never actually answered my question what is exactly that brings you to these parts I just swoosh my tail a bit <laughs> <laughs> swat some flies with your big yeah yeah Terminus will just go answers are required answers may be found here Terminus seeks answers we see the there. Lord Harold. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Harold, you say, huh? Harold, yeah. No, no, I'm doing your accent now. <laughs> <laughs> absorbing the NPC. <laughs> In case you hadn't noticed, I can't do accents. <laughs> oh no, Dragon, I loved your northern accent. <laughs> <laughs> Just do all of them, why not? Her- we see the young Lord Harold, yeah. <laughs> Harold, you see. And there's a very obvious uh, moment as like uh, the stranger with the low-brimmed hat. If you're looking for a mental image of the, the stranger in the traveling cloak and the low-brimmed hat, uh, imagine perhaps a Matthew McConaughey, if you're looking for a mental image of this man. So he's kind of like maybe early 40s, like striking, strikingly handsome, but weathered in a way. Um, and you see that Tiny as you penis Harold's name, he looks... wilted and hanging off his forehead. Yeah. <laughs> you may not have known that we have Matthew McConaughey's number one fan here in the form of the sprite. Oh no! The irrational well, he... hatred of Matthew McConaughey. It's perfectly rational. Hopefully that won't transfer to this character, but we'll see. Anyway, regardless, you see, as you mentioned Harald's name, there's a look that he shoots to the halfling. So the halfling in the heavy armor with the massive sword. Can you roll me an insight check, please, Dagmar? I ain't never heard of uh, Harold. I can't say I've uh, heard the name. <laughs> I got a six again. I really not... I have got good insight, but... Not today. <laughs> just the first sniff oh, of that whiskey. Yeah. With the Dagmar's yeah, exactly, insight is yeah. gone. <laughs> Drunk off the He's fumes. Probably just, yeah. well, with the roll of a six, you're kind of looking at him and like you're not quite sure how to interpret that look. I mean, maybe he's heard of Harold. Maybe he's genuine that he says he hasn't heard of Harold. Who knows? Uh, he certainly claims not to know that name. Mm. As you sit there around the fire, what action from the party? The dwarf is like, eyes are just kind of moving between each of you. He has not put down the crossbow nor unloaded the crossbow. Well, I'm I'm back to super suspicious. Yeah, probably like. So tell tell me, friends, have have you seen have you seen an evil sorcerer come past here of late? And I pipe up at that point, <laughs> rather angrily. Oh, oh you go, Talmaka. Yeah, I pipe up that. Uh, is that uh, that ogre fellow over there? <laughs> <laughs> Looks a bit like uh, an evil sorcerer. And I eye him up. Uh, which of you, uh, so which of the, the beings around the campfire are you addressing the question to? Uh, I guess I guess this guy who's been talking to us the most. Uh, Matthew McConaughey. Got, the, Matthew McConaughey, as he's now known. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Uh, ro- roll, me, roll me a persuasion check. Nine. <laughs> That's oh. not going well. Jesus, you're rolling shocking today. I know. Oh, dear, dear. The, the stranger's face will kind of darken a little bit and whilst he was kind of cordial before like he seems like uh, just a little colder now as he replies if you're talking about Fortinbras well <laughs> as I'm sure you know friend he's holed up in the, t- the keep we don't take much to do with him in fact we were just passing through uh, ain't clapped side of the man and frankly we don't want to now let's uh, move our conversation to perhaps uh, I'm gonna perception check that to see if he's lying to us insight check very well uh, can soldier draw me a, a, an insight check uh, perception no no Perception is for seeing things. In, in, insight is for like okay. determining intentions and lying. Eighteen. Ooh. Eighteen. Like a strong oh, I'm playing from a different soldier, character. Who, who the fuck are you playing as? Roderick. I was wondering why I was so good. Hang oh on. yeah, you're playing as the <laughs> fucking twelve level Tabaxi. Of course, okay, that's why you've been rolling so high. Jesus. No, no. Literally, I just came in and out of it. <laughs> okay. Because I keep accidentally coming out. I'll let the roll of the 18 stand, but as it turns out, as it turns out, the sprite's been having like a technical difficulty, and the reason, yeah, the rolls are so great. <laughs> no. she's been playing as a character four was the, was times. The, was the intimidation check also? No, intimidation was me. Okay, fair. 
Okay, I'll, I'll let the role of the 18 stand. So, uh, as Soldier kind of looks at um, this man in the kind of cloak, it's obvious he is mortally terrified of Fortinbras. So even the mention of Fortinbras's name seems to like have put him on edge. And you, you believe he's being absolutely sincere when he says that he hasn't seen Fortinbras and definitely doesn't want to. Moreover, like you can tell that like there's a bit of an edge to this dude. Like he's very much being friendly and cordial, but you get the impression that like the rest of his companions are eager to see the back of you. You're not quite sure what's going on here, but like, you're pretty certain he hasn't seen Fortinbras, or at least as far as you can tell, and he really doesn't want to run into him either. And you sense that like his friendly demeanor is perhaps a facade. Brass, you're pretty sure with a roll of an 18 and insight check that is the case. Okay. Moreover, it's kind of t tapping into the vibe around the campfire. You sense that they're a little bit wary of you. Whilst this guy is being friendly, you sense that perhaps there's a bit of a veneer to it. That he's definitely doing something here, and you guys are maybe interfering, perhaps? But he, you, don't say, you don't sense he's hostile, but there's something going on here you can't quite unpick yet. What action from the party? Well, perhaps a question first. You know, we, we were aware of uh, the large uh, metal clanging inside the barrels. Does that come down to perception? Does that come down to insight in terms of trying to figure out more about that? Um, now that you're aware of the metal clanging inside the barrels, it would be an investigation check to try and join the dots. Alright, um, I have some proficiency, so can I do an investigation check on those barrels then? You certainly can. Okay, I will do exactly that. Uh, I rolled a, a, a dead one <laughs> once again. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> 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 oh, so well. in the increasingly inaccurate information provided by Talavanka. <laughs> so Talavanka, who, be who began the game so well, as, as he moves over, he kind of leans nonchalantly over one of the barrels, trying to like get feel the weight to the very side. As he leans against it, he realizes like he's much heavier than the barrel, and it topples over to one side, and the barrel bursts, spilling its contents over over the campsite. Oh Jesus! As the barrel bursts, there's like a, just a hail of arrowheads, crossbow bolts, small weapons, daggers, and pieces of miscellaneous shields and armor that spill out of the burst barrel around the campfire. Immediately, conversation stops dead as everyone looks at one another, broken only by the chortling of the idiotic man carrying the barrel goes <laughs> as the silence becomes uncomfortably long. <laughs> Jesus Christ! You need to that stop. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm yeah. starting to see why you'd never played D and D before. <laughs> D Dagmar's just going to be like, "So spices, you say? Some pointy spices, there, mate." Yeah. <laughs> Uh, who can Dagmar roll me a persuasion check just to see how how well his this his persuasion little persuasion check. <laughs> a natural one. <laughs> oh, for God's sake! <laughs> oh! This is just a disaster. Is this the worst interaction that anyone has ever had with any other characters in Dungeons and Dragons? Well. <laughs> 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 A any, attem oh, any, attempt to any attempt at civility or Dagmar's attempt to kind of lighten the situation with humor is not received well. So instantaneously, the large ogre <laughs> brand brandishes his club, which at closer distance you can now see is actually a small anchor, which he holds above his head. Moreover, cool. like the halfling who is just going to be holding a sword against his shoulder will now draw it to like a fighting pose and kind of drop down into a low stance. And like the, oh. kind of the man, the Matthew, McCon the Matthew McConaughey man who's... Identity and name you never asked. Was well, gonna like throw back the cap from the side of his head. I think, friends, perhaps you've uh, stumbled into something you don't understand and perhaps don't care to. And you can see that like he's putting his hands slowly into the reaches of his cloak. Perhaps you best be on your way. What action from the party? I'm pointing my bow at Matthew McConaughey, and I'm like, "Who's your war with, friend?" Roll me an intimidation check, but it's going to have to be good. All right, this is actually me. I promise. Yeah, make sure you're rolling from the right character, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, and let's hope it's not a natural one. <laughs> 22. Yeah. Oh, okay. okay. Nice. Okay, so the situation, oh, good work. the situation remains tense. And as you kind of turn your bow on him, there's a quick, and incredibly quick as he rolls very, very high on his sleight of hand check, there's suddenly like a strange metal object in his hand with a barrel that's pointed directly at you. If you must know, we're here to make a little bit of a trade. And the trade ain't exactly what you might term legal. Now, we ain't got nothing to do with yourselves. We don't want to interfere in your business if you don't want to interfere in ours. Now, we'd be much obliged if you would just be on your way. 
Interesting. Um, I I have never mm. seen such a, cata- a cataclysmic series of one. <laughs> <laughs> it's appropriate, perhaps, even as I move the minis around. Salamanca fell over. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's on brand. <laughs> there, we, there we go. So hopefully we can get, we can pull some of that footage. There we are. Oh, nice. So the party stands at a crux. You could double down or you can retreat. Who's the trade with, did he say? He didn't. So he merely said that there they were here to trade and the trade was not strictly legal and basically yep. to mind your own business. Okay, I am unwavering. Who's your trade with? Mm, roll me a second intimidation check, but with disadvantage. So, correspondingly, like, with advantage, you roll... Uh, explaining for the viewership at home, if you roll with advantage, you roll twice and pick the highest. If you roll with disadvantage, you roll twice and pick the lowest result. So, he is not, not inclined to part with information. <laughs> oh, no, that doesn't sound good. All right, seven and six. So, six <laughs> is my lowest. Uh. Okay, with a, a low click, he kind of cocks, cocks back the hammer of his strange references. I'm going to count to ten. One. Two. Three. And he'll go, obviously go, go on in this fashion. What action from the party? Ooh. Oh, I'm going to charge him down. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> right, here we go. Good job, we have a oh, nice Okay, demo. then. All righty. <laughs> I have no idea what's in his hand. Obviously. Let's roll initiative, then. Uh, oh good. <laughs> this is this is when we find out that they're all like level twenty. And quality are, quality uh, in de- de-escalation from the party. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. I mean this is this is basically in keeping with uh, the rest of it. Uh, right, that's a four from me on initiative. Four from me as well. You go, oh, dear Glenn Coco. Uh, that's a forty. Oh, an eighteen for me. Fourteen plus four. Ooh. Ten. Okay, good God. The fastest by a substantial margin is Talamanca. What would Talamanca like to do? So the battle lines have been drawn. Hopefully you can maybe see on the camera that the situation is thusly. The parties are arrayed up. You are scant maybe five or ten feet away from one another arrayed around the campfire. I would just like to say that I'm charging into a gun because my character doesn't know what it is and I don't get inspiration. (laughs) I I will award a point of inspiration for that. um, For his... You're, oh, you, could, you could we all get a point of inspiration for whining to the TM? Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm giving us a one-off. Uh, I believe this is absolutely what Soldred is a very, a ve- apparently a very violent character will do. Uh, Shocking that. The sprite makes a violent character. <laughs> <laughs> I'm playing as the wee free men. Of course I'm jumping into battle. I hadn't anticipated what happens if the rest of the campaign, if um, you are killed by the very friendly traitors. Yeah. So I, I had an intention. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, who, well, who I, I, this guy's got a... Sorry, go on. Yeah, the very friendly traders who I hadn't intended for you to fight, but never mind. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah you also hadn't intended us to roll like six crit fails in a row, but here we are. Yeah. <laughs> it's D&D, folks. Uh, uh, Talamanca, uh, you're, <laughs> you're the first act. Goes. What are you going to do? All right, well, I, I'm, I don't like the look of uh, that guy at the front. I think he needs uh, dealing with. Um, so I may use my short bow. I believe he's in range. How far? How far am I away from these guys? Uh, you are at most maybe fifteen or twenty feet away from them. Okay, I'm not within range. I guess oh. is the uh, my, my key question here. And am I behind? Sort of. That looks vaguely like cover, right? <laughs> yep. So there is what effectively amounts to like a, a pile of baggage near like a, a large log that they've piled their gear around. So you could definitely take cover behind it. Yeah, you, know, you could try and hide with that with your cunning action. Yeah, I might do. Okay. Well, I think I'm gonna first. Uh, Take a sh- uh, take a shot with my short bow at uh, Ooh. Uh, the the man with the gun because I don't like. Okay, that left- ogre is bigger than I thought. Five, uh, five, make an attack roll for me, please. Okay, attack bow with a sh- attack roll with a short bow. Um, that would be a uh, a nine plus f- uh, sorry a six plus four, which is ten oh, to hit a ten. As a kid, a shoom, the arrow looses through the air. The stranger will just dodge to one side and the arrow will foom, go clean through his cloak, inflicting no damage on him, unfortunately. It just sticks in the ground like seven or eight feet behind him. Uh, you still have your movement and you still have a possible bonus action on your turn. Okay. Well, I think... You could try and hide behind the thing, yeah. I was going to say, I think my, uh, I will use my, uh, yeah, my, my bonus action to hide behind that cover. Okay, I shall move to Lanka accordingly. Can you roll me a stealth check, please? 
I can indeed. You roll a one, I swear to God. You're out. <laughs> uh, no, that was a four, but plus six stealth, so ten. A ten. So, like, Talamaka leaps behind the cover and kind of draws his lizard body around himself, forgetting that his, his long crocodile-like tail is protruding <laughs> up behind <laughs> <laughs> Clearly signposting exactly where he is to anyone who cares to look. So he, <laughs> You've had a bit of a shocker today. <laughs> I have. I'll be, I'll be honest with you. Th- th- this might be the most disastrous be- uh, uh, beginning to someone's it's, D&D yeah. career I have ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> you put all this effort in and we're all just going to die on like <laughs> Just tanking it instantly. <laughs> The next being to act with uh, an initiative roll of a 15, so after Talmanka is in fact the mysterious Matthew McConaughey-like stranger. Raising his pistol, there is a noise like thunder as he looses it at the very visible form of the centaur bearing down on him. With a roll of an 18, he will hit, and you will suffer, Soldred, seven points of fire damage as this white-hot ball of lead just poof, hits him in the chest. There's blood that spatters. You feel like the, the ball or the round, whatever he's fired from this pistol, just glancing off a rib. And he will stand his ground, he'll throw the pistol to one side, and there's a strange kind of strumming sound as he grabs a lute, or a stringed instrument, and with a wide grin, Alright, I see what we're going to do it this way. That will conclude his turn, he's going to stay exactly where he was standing next to the campfire. The next act of the initiative order by my count would be the huge ogre-like figure, who will go barreling across the campfire directly towards the most martial looking of the party, the dwarven paladin Dagmar. <laughs> the ogre, you can see that closely, like the little goblin that was perched on his shoulder shrieks like some kind of bird or parrot mm-hmm. squawks at you as he raises the anchor above his head and swings it down like a club in your direction. With a roll of a 16 to hit, he will hit and deal mm. a, an impressive 12 points of bludgeoning damage. Ouch. Wait, will he hit? So I'm AC 18. Oh, it's 80. Oh, in that case, he will not hit then as he brings yeah. the anchor down. Yeah. D- Dagmar is able just to bring his shield up above his head. There's a loud clang as it deflects off the shield. And Dagmar, still settling on his accent, is able to just push the, a- the anchor aside. <laughs> casting, <laughs> casting aside the blow in the way that he casts aside accents. <laughs> <laughs> After the ogre, we are at... Another character, so the unnamed, excuse me, ask his name, character who was holding the barrel over one shoulder, he will drop the barrel to the ground, spilling more weapons and ammunition all over the floor as he takes off and flees down the high road. Ooh. Wait, who uh, is that, sorry? The simpleton. No, the simpleton. Oh, okay. He's made oh, okay. just a beeline yeah. off ski down the high road. Uh, Soldred, as he does so, he runs past you. Now, because he enters your threat range and then leaves your threat range, you can take what's called an attack of opportunity and try and cut him down as he runs past you, or you can just avoid him. <laughs> try and cut down a simple man as he runs past you. That seems <laughs> on brand at the moment. I'm all right. Centaur starts wars with the mentally ill. <laughs> <laughs> so, Soldier yeah. just kind of oh like. God. So Soldier doesn't touch him as he, he just flees as fast as the rest can carry him off down the road, shrieking in his kind of thick, heavy, dullard voice. Uh, the next act will be the halfling. So the halfling with his huge kind of glowing sword will interpose himself between Matthew McConaughey and Soldred, and he will raise his two-handed sword and swing at Soldred's body. What's mm-hmm. your armor class, Soldred? 16. 16. He mm-hmm. has exactly 16 to hit, regrettably. As he swings his kind of great sword, he will inflict no less than eight points of slashing damage as it just <laughs> tears into the side of Soldred's flesh. Okay. Soldred, I suppose he, he whinnies or takes the damage in some fashion. Yeah. Uh, now we are at Soldred's turn. I take it this twerp is in between me and my prey? Matthew McConaughey? He is indeed. So I will zoom in. Hopefully you can maybe get a better view of the battlefield. Here is the Matthew McConaughey cowboy-esque figure. Yeah. Soldred, the centaur, and in between you both who has now engaged you, the halfling in the heavy armor carrying the ridiculously oversized sword. I am going to melee attack him with my hooves. Um, oh, I believe you can do that as a bonus action as a centaur? Only if you've charged. I started the encounter by charging in at your man. That's what started the... If you move at least 30 feet straight forward towards a target and hit it with a melee weapon on the same turn, you can immediately make a hooves attack as a bonus action. I hate you. I've not done that. <laughs> but you've, got your, you've got a spear. That's... Yeah, but I also need. want to smack Matthew McConaughey. 
But I need yeah, to get well rid of then. this fucking child first. Um, can I hop over it? <laughs> Doesn't sound like you. Uh, you can try. If you make me an athletics check, I will allow you to try and just spring directly over his head. I mean, he's tiny. Like, let fly with. No, oh, that's a ten. Um, uh, as you kind of try to move around him, he just blocks you every turn. He just he's tiny. You, you step right. He steps left. Like you try and j- just no. I'm trying rear. to jump over his head. You try and rear, but you just can't get enough momentum or enough of a run up to leap over him. Yeah, I'm gonna. I'm gonna do that. A, t- a ten is not enough to leap over uh, an armored, experienced warrior's head, but he's trying to cut you down. Um, <laughs> sorry, sorry, Sprite. Not this time. I call heavy bullshit. Oh, you can still attack. You still have your, ac- right, you well, still have your action if you would like to use your action. All right. Well, I'm gonna throw my. Uh... No, that's a melee. All right, I'm gonna longbow Matthew McConaughey in the face. Okay. Uh, roll me an attack roll then. So at at the moment at the moment um, you're nose to nose or not quite nose to nose he is nose to hooves with the halfling. <laughs> so if you want to fire the longbow effectively you would have to move away from him. Otherwise you would roll with disadvantage if you were still within five feet of him to then fire the bow at another target. All right, I'm gonna roll with disadvantage because there's clearly I can't run over, past, around, or under this fucking fuck. Longbow to hit twenty one. So I need to do that again for disadvantage, which is nine. Oh, nine. Again, draw it. Again, you've got that inspiration point. Do I look like I'm using my inspiration I don't point? You're getting mad at me because you're rolling like shit. Jesus. <laughs> All right. You draw back the bow, but the halfling kind of dodging from side to side, he just nicks the side of the bow and just knocks it to one side as the arrow... The sh- halfling the doesn't come up past my body. The halfling <laughs> is a fucking halfling. Right, you do realise he's explaining using he's, he's explaining your shit rolls. Like, yeah, a, a nine, what would you prefer? That you can just pass this halfling without any questions asked in a game, gameplay mechanical sense? That does That's stupid. I think a half, um, I think a ten is, is an acceptable one for a centaur to jump over a halfling's head. Okay, well, it isn't. Get, out, get over it. Mm. Stop being salty. Mm. Afraid not, Sprite. Sorry. A nine, will, or nine or a ten will not, not get you much in d and I'm afraid. Okay, okay. Next in the initiative order, either Dagmar or Terminus. You are the only two. You are tied for initiative. You can decide which of you will act next. Um, I'm just going to slap the ogre, dude, so... Up to up to you. You can go first if you want. Dungeon Master, is there any way... So, if I were to produce a, a line of death that was 5 feet wide and 30 feet long, how many people could I reasonably get in the line of death? Uh, just hitting your, the enemy? Yes, ideally. <laughs> uh, <laughs> ideally. Uh, 5 by 30, you could clip... Matthew McConaughey, the ogre. I can't believe I'm calling this. He has a rich backstory, <laughs> and we're calling him Matthew McConaughey. You do this. <laughs> that is a fairly sad backstory for any character. Yeah. Regardless, <laughs> the Matthew McConaughey like figure, not literally Matthew McConaughey, but uh, you could hit him, clip the ogre, and still hit the dwarf with the crossbow. You could hit all three of them in a line that was 30 feet long and 5 feet wide Wonderful. without hitting any, any of your party. I'm going to do exactly that then. Um, that basically. So Terminus will just plant his feet really solidly in the ground. And basically his staff, which is well, it's kind of spear, the blades of which are normally kind of glowing reddish, will just glow kind of greenish. And then just a little kind of sound and a little hole will open in the top of it. And out of it will just gush forth. Just a really thick green liquid will just come blasting out um, forwards in a kind of line dead ahead of him. Cool. So I shall move Terminus on the game board. Yes, thank you. That's like... And it does this this line washes out. What does that do? Oh, so each creature each creature in the line must succeed must succeed on a deck saving throw or be covered in acid. Oh, okay. Ooh. So I shall roll first of all for the dwarf, whose name you know is Kronar. What's the save he's got to be? Um I assume it's my spell save DC, which is thirteen. Thirteen? Uh the dwarf has passed. The ogre has failed catastrophically. Excellent. Not great at deck saves, being an ogre. And finally, the Matthew McConaughey figure, he will also fail. Excellent. So the ogre and Matthew so, McConaughey have failed. They are covered in acid for the spell's duration, which is concentration, uh, or until a creature and until a creature uses an action to scrape or wash the acid off itself or another creature. A creature covered in the acid takes four, 2d4 damage at the start of each of its turns. Ooh. Okay, wonderful. So that, there's a horrible sizzling noise as the, like, the acid just sprays over them. You can see the dwarf kind of thrashing around, but his armor seems to protect him from the worst of the acid. Matthew McConaughey is all over his pretty face. His hair is just like flaming and singeing. The ogre is like huge, like 
gouge. It's almost been burned already by the acid. Picture like the alien blood from the alien movies as it just <laughs> sizzles through this ogre's flesh. There's a horrible smell of like burning fat as the ogre's blubbery hide takes all this flame from the acid. Excellent turn, Terminus. Anything else you'd like to do? Uh, no, but it's actually... Remind me again. Um, concentration doesn't need an action, does it, to maintain? Nope. Cool. Um, nope. Then in that case, I, I am going to use my bonus action to command the defender when it's defender's turn. Um, uh, the defender, defender acts in your turn. So what would you like to yes, do? Yes. Um, I would like hit to move him up to. As if can I can I get him up to the ogre? Uh, yep. You can interpose the defender. Your crab-like. Automaton between the ogre, he would need to also be in contact with the dwarf, but that's fine. Yep. Um, basically, so one of the things I, a I'm going to do an attack, and b I'm setting up for deflect attack as a reaction. Basically, the defender imposes disadvantage on the attack roll of one creature it can see within five foot, provided the attack roll is against a creature other than the defender. So basically, if he tries to attack um, the our paladin, he will have I can impose disadvantage on that, right. um, which is nice. But yeah, I'm going to have him basically. Yeah, so he's, he's going to use his long spiky tail and just. Stab at a nicely acid hole made armor uh, hole in the ogre. So wonderful. That is make a attack roll, please. So that's twenty to hit. Twenty will most definitely be a hit. Roll for damage, please. It's like we talked about this before the stream, but we imagine the scorpion-like tail of the steel defender, like this kind of spider scorpion-like metal creature, is telescopic, like Doc Ock's tentacles. Zoom! <laughs> <laughs> it, sh it shoots out almost like a spear, piercing the side of the ogre. Roll for damage, please. Uh, so that's seven force damage. Seven force damage. Ooh. Powerful as it just pierces the ogre's side. He, oh, he kind of vomits up a little bit of blood and bile as it hits something vital and internal. Wonderful. The final player to act is Dagmar. And then we have one other character after that. But Dagmar Ooh. is the next member of the party to act. What's Dagmar going to oh, yeah, do? Yeah, we've got Dwarf, though. Uh, so, Dagmar is... Uh... Yeah, so I get the, the ogre is just like stumbling around a bit at this point. He's got like acid splashing all over him. He's got like the defenders just stabbed him. Um, Dagmar is going to hold his battle axe uh, up in the air. Do a, do a little like um, a little like Thor moment. There's going to be like a tiny little like rumble of thunder. You know, we're not on sort of like <laughs> proper like Thor level yet. Um, but he's going to cast Thunderous Smite. So uh, let's see how that goes first. Um, oh no, so I think that just happens, right? Yep, Thunderstrike uh, yep. just happens. And the next time you hit... Mm -hmm. uh, and then, yeah, he's he's just gonna just gonna whack him one, basically. So that is make gonna it. be... Oh, sorry, bud. Oh, sorry, just make an attack roll. Go for it. Yep, okay, awesome. So that is 17 to hit. Ogre does not have a high AC, so that's does definitely a hit. You kind of cleave to the weapon, crackling with thunder as you connect. Roll for damage. Excellent. Okay, so normal damage is going to be four. So four slashing damage. Uh, what does Thunder Smite give me? 2d6, I think. 2d6 thunder damage, I believe. That is going to be five thunder damage. Five thunder damage for a total of nine. Mm-hmm. Wonderful. As the ogre pierced in the side by the steel defender, like the, the lightning just hits him and there's a horrible... <laughs> As he convulses, like spraying, like a little bit of acid flies over the place. Uh, have a point of inspiration. I really like the cool description of Dagmar, like brandishing the axe and like doing a little dwarven prayer. That's very cool. A point of inspiration, yeah. I think. <laughs> Terrific. After Dagmar's turn, we now get to Kronar, who is the other dwarf faced with the steel defender. Kronar will cast aside his crossbow and lunge in with his dagger against the steel defender. With a natural roll of a two, he will just clang <laughs> ineffectively off the steel defender's <laughs> armor. In fact, it's so catastrophic that as the dagger hits the side of the steel defender, the blade just snaps in half and breaks. <laughs> oh. <laughs> what kind of automaton is this? Your armor is impregnable as he beats his like impotent little dwarven fist <laughs> against the steel defender. <laughs> okay. Uh, we're back to the top of the initiative order and Talamanca, who is still very much not hidden uh, after having been... <laughs> <laughs> right, can I take another look at the uh, the state of play, please, DM? Uh, yes, you can. Close up on the battle cam. So, hopefully, you'll be able to see. Yeah. So, so uh, more or so, less what's, what's going on. So, the the least incapacitated of the team now, and the most threatening is still um, a, a dwarven foe. Uh, so there's also if... Matthew McCart. Wow, Matthew McCart. Yeah, but he's quite he's quite acid, acidified yeah. right now. <laughs> That's and a I, normal, I normal really... sentence to say in D&D. <laughs> Matthew McConaughey is covered in acid. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think I'll do it. I'll move 
this static camera. This hopefully okay. Good camera. I think. Uh, ah yes. But all of that said, I think I've been slightly intimidated by the amount of acid that's going around the place. I don't think I'm quite ready to dive in just yet. So I will remain in there my is... cover. I'm going to take a pot shot from my cover at Matthew McConaughey. Um, bearing okay, in mind, let, let fly. All right, bearing in mind that uh, he is quite distracted by the burning acid. So I'll take a shot uh, and rolled a, uh, a natural three plus a four, which is seven. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Oh. One of these days, someone like is going to do on attacks. Uh, I've rolled a perception, so this is an unusual situation. So I've rolled an out of sequence perception check for Matthew McConaughey. And I will give you advantage in that attack because he rolled so abysmally. Let's assume that he is sufficiently distracted from cleaning off the acid to not notice the arrow. Okay. So, so I'll <laughs> ro let you roll with advantage from your position of very, very poor concealment, but nevertheless <laughs> still concealed from a man currently being burned by acid. <laughs> Please right. don't biff this roll. <laughs> okay. That was a, a 19 plus 4, which is 23. That's more like it. <laughs> Sweet, yeah. Okay. Um, Hazard, Tal Talamanca has rolled more than, like, five. <laughs> Excellent. He's uh, really doing something. <laughs> and so, uh, roll, I will roll to pier so a piercing attack, which is a three plus two for damage, which is five. And then you can also throw sneak attack on top of that, because you've and had, then a, you had advantage. Yeah, and then I will throw sneak attack on top of that also, which is... A 5 plus 6, which is 11. So 5 from the short bow, 11 from the sneak attack. 11 for the sneak attack in total, not bad. This time your arrow finds its mark. Matthew McConaughey takes the arrow squarely in the chest as it goes clean through the body of his guitar, severing one of the strings. It doom, thunks into his chest. He looks up at you, lock, locking eyes with you, now revealed your location as the acid continues to sear his face. You are going to rip that, he says, as he like drops the guitar and begins walking purposefully towards you. Uh, cool. The next act... Is ah bizarrely, it is in fact the man with no name, Matthew McConaughey. Time for him to take two D four acid damage. Then first, he will take two D four acid damage. Please roll two D four acid damage for me. That would be four. <laughs> four, striding through the melee, kind of like weaving through his allies. You can see as he like makes his way across the acid, continuing to sear him as he gets it just up to Talamanca, reaching inside his cloak. You're gonna. Everything goes black for him as the acid. Burns the last of the life from his body as he collapses at Talamanca's feet. Ooh. No hit points left. <laughs> wow. I love how these guys were by and large minding their own business. <laughs> yeah. I came up yeah. just kind of fucked everything up, started a fight <laughs> with them, and now, but now we've Dragged dissolved a man. The, oh, the simpleton's run away. The, the pirate ogre, who I really wanted to get some more information on, is like, yeah. <laughs> we've, we've incinerated him. <laughs> this is awful. Worst. Are we the baddies? <laughs> 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 when you eventually meet Fortin Brass, you like basically like you play now as the second half of the campaign as Fortin Brass trying to foil you guys. <laughs> yeah. It's like, do you know how many innocent people we've killed to get here? <laughs> At least four. <laughs> uh, terrific. So uh, that character is now dead. He's succumbed to the acid. The next person with initiative roll of twelve will be the ogre. Can you please? Oh, acid uh, again. Yep. No um roll for the acid damage as he still thrashes around the acid burning his blubbery flesh. oh jesus christ that's eight. <laughs> oh wow eight okay i might need to look a thing up <laughs> <laughs> always good to hear that <laughs> yep yeah i didn't think i'd have to look up how many hit points ogres have because like, i didn't think <laughs> but it, it turns out that's a thing i will have to do <laughs> via, what have we done via the magic i know <laughs> Clearly, we but I had no idea the, the level of incompetence he was dealing with. <laughs> <laughs> incompetence followed by surprise incompetence. <laughs> he should have told us who yeah. he was fucking selling we're, to. Exactly. I mean, we're, we're fine at fighting, right? Yeah, yeah just terrible wow, at yeah. making tactical <laughs> decisions. <laughs> yeah. But Soldier is, yeah. And Soldier is quite hot headed, is what we've established from this. Yeah. Yeah. And then the Talamanca is like an idiot savant yeah. when it comes to attacks. <laughs> this is all started by Talamanca leading on a barrel. What, yeah. What's in here? Oh, yeah. like you're playing Mr. Magoo in this game. <laughs> I need another drink. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's that sort of game. <laughs> it's just how D&D &D goes sometimes. Uh... <laughs> Yeah, you, sometimes you're just burning Matthew McConaughey with acid. I mean, like, <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. 
This whole thing is made better by the fact that I know how thorough of a DM the Bard is. The fact that within just an hour and a half we've got to a I don't know this off the top of my head, we'll have to check, I haven't prepared for this, in an hour and 14 minutes. That's yeah. good going, <laughs> guys. We broke him already. Yeah. Right, we are back. I have looked up how many hit points ogres have, and turns out it's quite a lot. So while the ogre is still very much dead, drenched in the acid, covered in it, eating away into his blobbery hide, he is very much still alive and swinging. And very much swinging as he raises the huge anchor above his head, he will bring it down with a crash on Dagmar. Yar, laddie! You'll be sorry the day ye messed with Scrag Iron Belly! And the kind of goblin perched on his shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> Good. We've got we, we've oh. got the backstory and the accent I wanted. We can kill him now. <laughs> yeah. Uh, he will That's very much, however, miss this time. So, like, with an exceptionally low roll, he just can't hit the acids. Kind of obviously distracting him as he brings it down. There's a you crash as he demolishes one of the t one of the tents to the other side of Dagmar. Dagmar himself remains uninjured. Okay. He's very short, so. Following Scrag Iron Belly's turn, we now move to the next initiative order, which by my reckoning is the Halfling. So now locked in combat with Soldred, he will raise his two-handed sword with a natural roll of a 16 plus whatever he has for strength, which I'm not going to tell you. He will find his mark yet again against Soldred. Oh, it's a good roll. Soldred, you take 11 points of slashing damage as the blade just hacks into the kind of broad, horsey torso that you've got, gouging a deep wound into your equine flank that must be you looking pretty rough now i'm on two hit points oh, yeah. <laughs> oh you must have a decent number of hit points because you've taken like three serious hits 28 yeah. oh nice that's, that's good you can, see, you can see that as as the halfling sword kind of cleaves through the air there's like a bright green light that runs up the length of the blade so oh no possibly enchanted oh. who knows but, but visibly not a regular sword as the halfling kind of calls out from within his hood he was like, I don't want to do this, but you began this fight! As he swings the sword. I hate I hate the fact that he is absolutely correct. Yeah. <laughs> do I get an attack of opportunity? Uh, you do not get an attack of opportunity. He would have to leave your threat range before you could do that. Uh, he's very much continuing to fight you. Yeah. He knows he's got the upper hand. Uh, so, after his turn, we now move to Soldred. I am going to smack him one with my... Spear. Yeah, I think spear is your melee one. Um, you're presumably only holding it one-handed at the moment, so that's the D6 yeah. option. Oh, thank Christ. 22. Woo. 20, 22 is most definitely a hit. So, that was your spear or the longbow? That's the spear. Uh, don't forget as well. With the spear. Don't forget on top of that sprite, on, you'll get the damage roll and you'll also get dreadful strikes. Yes, I will. Quote, when you uh, hit a creature with a weapon, you can deal an extra 1d4 psychic damage to the t target. You can augment your weapon strikes with mind-scouring magic drawn from the gloomy hollows of the Feywild. Oh, yes. Because I'm spooky. Once per turn per creature when you deal damage, you can just throw another d4 on there constantly. Really good. So that was a 3, and the standard 1d6 plus 2 was a fucking 2, so that's 4. Um, 7. 7, uh, seven damage. 7 points of damage. Of which, so of which some is psychic, if that matters. Yep. Uh, he has no yeah. resistances or anything fun like that, so rearing up Soldier will kind of bring the spear back at this point. The whole weight of his mighty centaur body just bring it forward. And it'll gouge a chunk out of the side of the halfling's helmet. As the kind of blade of the spear pierces through his jaw, you can see teeth and like blood and bits of his jaw go flying off to one side, going right Ooh. through his helm. Nice. He spits to one side of like blood and teeth that kind of clatter on the floor and he kind of reorientates himself. Bloodied, definitely still taking a hit, but very much within the fight. So, oh, a strong hit there. Soldred, you still have your bonus action if you can do anything with a bonus action and you can still move, but you'd be moving away from combat so he would get an attack of opportunity if you withdrew. You could potentially... I oh, know it's not really worth it. You could throw Ensnaring Strike on there as a bonus, but that's not really worth it. Unless, if you, Basically, yeah, you can, you, can restrain, you can attempt to restrain him. Nah, I'm but, fine. Yeah. Okay, with the end then of Soldred's turn, we move to Duke, who was the simpleton. But Duke is now 120 feet down the road and will uh, never be seen or heard from he's again. Certainly off, <laughs> off the camera now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, uh, yeah uh, he's long gone. I don't, think he's, I don't think he's even visible on the other no, camera. But I will maybe point him out, perhaps through clever editing, we can see him. So is he behind? Is, he is here. If, I, uh, if you can yes. see that on either camera, oh, yeah. that's yes. where he is. Oh, yeah. He's pointing but, with a tape measure. 
Yes. I you Are had, you like, surprised by this? No, I'm, I'm surprised that he doesn't have like an official D&D pointing one or something, quite <laughs> frankly, given the, the, uh, the professional yeah, nature yes. of this setup. Yeah. The plus two wand of pointing, you know, that <laughs> yeah. powerful magic object. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so Duke will continue running off down the road, out of sight, out of this adventure, possibly. Maybe you'll catch up to him one day, mm. who knows. As he, becomes the, as he becomes the party's overwhelming nemesis going forward. Well, he's, yeah, he's the only witness to our war crime. So <laughs> we'll see him at The Hague. We're now down to either Dagmar or Terminus. Again, you guys have tied for initiative, so you can choose which of you will act. And these guys so are literal Dagmar criminals. Like, they had Do confessed we know that. that. They oh. said it's of a criminal nature oh, yeah, or an unlawful that. nature, yeah. and I won't talk about it. I was like, who are you selling it to? I was very clear that I was only against him if he was, you know, and, handling and, and children. And so we dissolved him, Your Honor, yeah. That's and so we is. fucking dissolved him. <laughs> uh, we're like Batman, but with more acid. And Batman doesn't even kill <laughs> people. It's, it's like some, fronti- some frontier justice here. Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, really re- so, yeah. re- regardless, uh, we have uh, either Dagmar or Terminus are next to take their turn. Again, you've tied for initiative, so I'm happy for you as the party to decide which of you act first. Um, I'm trying to think if there's any advantage to either of us moving first or second. No, I'm just down to plain attacks, basically. Yeah, now. me too, I think. Um, so I am going to, I guess I'll go first. And how close am I to either of, either the ogre or the other dwarf? You're maybe 15 feet from the dwarf and maybe 20 feet from the okay. ogre. Okay. Um, I'll probably hit it. So, for the reference, this is this here is Terminus. Um, I will probably. So, Terminus will hold his his staff spear thing. I think it's technically a pike out, uh, and just launch a, f- a, a bolt of fire from the end of it at the ogre. Gonna aim for that acid hole I made earlier. Okay, make an attack roll, please. Is this, I assume, fire bolt. Yes. So that is a whopping twenty-three to hit. Ooh, 23 nice. will hit as the ogre kind of rise around. He's a pretty big, obvious target. Uh, roll for damage. That is 10 damage, the maximum. Ooh. Oh, dang! Damn, okay. yeah. I've really got it in for this ogre. is on fire. Or... The, the, the fireball explodes against the ogre's already acid-drenched shoulder and in a horrid puff of explosive flame incinerates and annihilates the goblin on his shoulder. <laughs> and so Terminus, Terminus will just go, auxiliary target eliminated. <laughs> I love it. Uh, I, I'll award a point of inspiration to the doctor for that. That was on on points for his role playing. Is the, so the defender still up up in the dwarf's grill? Is he? Oh no, he's up in. Um... Yes, he is. So uh, I know it's not the best quality image for you guys. Hopefully, yeah, we can clean it up a bit. This is the yeah. defender here, and I will move the roving cam over so you get a better view of what's happening. So hopefully, our viewership at home will also be able to see this. But this is an aerial view of the campsite and battlefield. There we go. The defender is there. This is the defender. Here is the dwarf, ogre, and friend at the far side, we have your colleague Dagmar. and comrade Dagbar. Cool. Um, then I think I'll keep the defender where he is, but I'll use my bonus action to have him uh, attempt to rend the um, the dwarf. Okay, make fly against the dwarf. As of yet, Kronar Iron Shanks, the dwarf, has not been damaged. And, and that's mm. probably likely to continue. 13, so that's probably going to miss. A 13 will not hit, unfortunately. He's a heavily armored dwarf, but yeah. this time is like the, the telescopic blade of the tentacle lashes at him. It'll just bounce off his armor, not even scratching the paint. He's like, Take that, you soulless machine. You can't break the armor of an Iron Shanks dwarven warrior. And with that, he'll continue wrestling with the, the Steel Defender, which he hasn't seemed to have grasped yet. Can't respond to him. <laughs> uh, it, t- it understands him. Um... Because it understands all the language that I speak, so whether your man's shouting in common or dwarvish, it can pick it up, but it just can't respond. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Leaps Let's go to then Dagmar next. Um, <laughs> yep. So, okay, I'm just gonna. Uh, facing down the ogre. Yep. Whack him with my battle axe, I think. Uh, yeah. So Make that is roll. gonna be. Oh, ooh, 10. I don't think that's gonna hit. Even for the the ogre doesn't have a particularly high armor class, but its armor class is greater than ten. Uh, so you swing the axe, at, and like it just strikes the blubber, but it's a tough hide, and you just try and push, but no, it's just not getting any purchase. The acid made it slick. It's it's difficult to inflict the damage that you want to. The ogre, yeah, laddie, I fence with better than ye <laughs> at sea. <laughs> uh, all right, do I? I think that's probably yeah. That that probably do me then. Cool. Uh, the next act, 
And the final person in the initiative order is the dwarf Kronar Ironshanks. Now, devoid of his dagger, which broke against the side of the steel defender, he will raise his fists because he has no other weapons and just try to slam them against the steel defender. <laughs> with, a, with a natural roll of a 17, he will hit he and will. he will deal three <laughs> points of damage. Yep. Oh my god. I'd love it if he just <laughs> beats this defender. Beats this guy up, right? Yeah. <laughs> The, the dwarf attempting to punch a robot to death. <laughs> yeah. This is what people come to the infamous gentleman for. <laughs> punch, a dwarf punches Again, a robot to death and we eviscerate Matthew McConaughey. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to Terminus's dismay, as the dwarf just keeps hammering his fist against it, there is actually a sizable dent that he has started to just pummel as it takes uh, X point damage. So please bark that up. Yep. Uh, this is okay. what the mending Correct. cantrip is for. <laughs> <laughs> We're back to the top of the initiative order and Talamanca. Okay, well, Talamanca smells the, uh, the burst of horse blood and can see with his keen lizard eyes uh, <laughs> the, uh, the staggering gait of, uh, of soldier from the corner of his eye. And I'm worried. So Talamanca will uh, scuttle over on all fours in a lithe lizard-like fashion to, uh, to corner the, um, the halfling and will draw his rapier. Oh, I love that he has a rapier. Um, and will <laughs> and will attempt to uh, to attack the halfling from behind. Um, okay, make it so. So, and that's a natural seventeen plus four is twenty one. Twenty one will definitely hit as you kind of move beside him. There's a gap in his plate armor, and you just whoo, quickly thrust the rapier through. You've got and sneak attack on this, yeah. To roll, and so I get. Uh, so I rolled eight plus two for damage for the rapier. Oh, wow! And nice. Wow. Man, nice. so Talamanca is brutal when he actually rolls well. <laughs> yeah, and then 5 plus 6, which is 11 for the sneak attack. As a bonus action, you can also try and bite him. Just throwing that out there. <laughs> I, was going, I was going to flee, but actually, if he's a... <laughs> you can take a chunk out of him, and well, if you're successful, it heals you. <laughs> let's see just how much damage you can deal. So let's go for it. Yeah. <laughs> All right. And yeah, why not? Let's take, it, let's take a, a, a bite on top of that as my bonus action. Uh, which rolls a, uh, a 6 plus 3 is a 9 to hit. So I suspect uh, my bite will fall short of the mark. Well, it would have fallen short of the mark had it not been for the fact that you've just skewered him right through the heart and he is in yeah. fact already <laughs> dead. So <laughs> Feast on his corpse. <laughs> <laughs> Soldier, as you, as you look on at the halfling who was nimbly dodging from side to side and like whose jaw was mangled horribly by your spear, suddenly the thin point of a bladed rapier just erupts from his chest from behind. Oh. And then you watch on in horror, you're about to congratulate your colleague Talamanca before his lizard head just comes in and it's a horrible crunch as he bites the halfling's head clean off. <laughs> oh. Just so we're clear, I'm a fae. Like, that doesn't bother me. <laughs> also, I reiterate, oh, we the baddies. <laughs> I'm really feeling that way. You basically just chest busted. Like, the, uh... Every time we kill someone, I don't feel great about it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'd have felt terrible if we killed the simpleton. That would have been cruel. Yeah, you're right. That's the cruel part. This is all yeah. fine. They're criminals. Yeah. This is it's okay. Fun. We can, we can, yeah. just, we can just, eat them. If there's one injustice in this world, it's tax evasion. <laughs> 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 right, uh, well, so we now move, or we, we would have now moved to the man with no name, Matthew McConaughey, but he is dead, so he, he will not be able to take his turn for obvious reasons. We now then move to the Ogre. Uh, so first off, he's going to take acid, because I'm still concentrating on that, so... Yep, please roll me some acid damage. That is... That's not bad, five. Five. Five acid damage, which I'll mark down for Scrag Iron Belly. A caustic brew is paying for itself. <laughs> uh, as it kind of continues to burn, it'll, it'll turn to Terminus and go, Yar, once I be finished with your dwarf, ye scurvy dog, ye metal man will die. Ye killed me first, mate. And he gestures to the, the incinerated form of the goblin. To which Terminus will respond, Analysis suggests audacity is misplaced. <laughs> <laughs> That's an excellent role playing. Anyway, Scrag Iron Belly will raise his club and bring it down. On to Dagmar. Remind me, what is Dagmar's armor class? Uh, it's uh, eighteen. Is the is the steel defender 18. next to um <laughs> next to the ogre? Yes, the uh, steel defender is within range of both the ogre and the dwarf. Uh, then it can impose disadvantage on that roll. Uh, because would you like it to? Uh, yep. The defender imposes disadvantage on attack roll of one creature it can see with is within five feet of it, provided the attack roll is against a creature other than the defender. Okay, uh, I've rolled with disadvantage and he rolls terribly both <laughs> times. So <laughs> irregardless. Da Dagmar, he kind of continues to lash out wildly, but it just Dagmar just droom, nimbly one side, droom, nimbly the other side, the club down, droom, 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 not touching Dagmar at all. Easily able to avoid the ogre strikes. Okay, 
Following the conclusion of the ogre's turn, if I can find him on my sheet, the halfling, but he is slain, so the halfling's turn is also forfeited. Now we move to Duke the Simpleton, who is now 180 feet down the road. And <laughs> Do you want to remove the, si uh, not the simpleton, the halfling from the combat? So he's full mount. Yes. Down. Thank you. There we go. Just for the sake of clarity, well remembered, Doctor. Uh, we are now at Soldred. Soldred on initiative step 10. Lovely. I'm. What action? What action, Soldred? I'm going to charge at the ogre. The ogre is the only one left, I presume. Uh, the ogre and the dwarf, but the ogre is between you and the dwarf. Ogre it is. Are you going to kind of like ramp up so you get your 30 foot charge thing? Yeah. Yep. Do my little trotty gallop and then come in and trot gallop and smack him one. Run run back and then hook, hook around and come back. I'm going to spear him pretty hard in the face and then I'm going to hoof attack him. Well, if the spear hits. Okay, make me uh, an attack roll with your spear then in the first instance, please. So like kind of pawing at the ground like a... Exactly like a bull, ready to charge. Soldier will kind of couch his spear like a lance and ride in. Lovely, that's a ten. Oh, a ten will not do it, but I remind you that you do have you do have your point of inspiration, which I awarded hmm. you. Go on then. <laughs> yeah, generally, you should use inspiration because you can't have multiple points. Uh, fourteen. A fourteen is in fact a hit. The ogre does not have a high armor class at all. Excellent. So the spear pierces his side. Roll for damage, and then once you've rolled for the spear's damage, we'll roll to see if you can hit him with your hooves. And also, you can put dreadful strikes on this as well. Uh, so but you can only do you can only do dreadful strikes once per creature per turn, so you can't yep. put it on the hoof. All right. Um, I actually ruled for one d six, but I'm not holding my bow at the moment, so it would be one d eight, wouldn't it? Yeah. It, uh, well, it's down to down to the the DM if 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 he's going to allow you to have grabbed the spear with the other hand. I presume so. But oh yeah, of course. I, I may be able to that. That's fine. Because I've gone in for a charge for yeah, it. You probably... That is five. That's actually less than the one I just fucking rolled, <laughs> Spanner. <laughs> and then throw but... dreadful strikes on top. And then throw a dreadful strike on top. Which is... Nine. Okay. And then hoof him. And then hoof. And then hoof him. And my hoof attack... Well, I'll roll for your hoof damage. ...is 14. 14 will hit. And then... Not only as you embed the spear in his blubbery side, like you rear up on the hind legs and just... <laughs> Which does another yeah. three. Additional three? Uh, just a th just an okay. extra three, yeah. What's the, what's the, roll, what's the attack roll on the hooves? The damage roll? Um, 1d4 plus two, That's... and I rolled a one because I hate myself. Still not bad as a bonus action, yeah. yeah. He had taken yeah. quite a bit of damage prior to this, however. Soldred, how would you like to do this? Okay, so I'm going to like... Bop him a few times in the, in the thing, cause I've I've gone up and my front hooves are going in there, and I'm gonna I'm gonna probably like an alley. He's gonna come bursting out like a little poof, and I'm guessing his face is like smooshing in a bit. He's looking a bit like your traditional boxer, and then he's just gonna crumple because obviously he can't withstand the onslaught of my heft, cause I'm a big hefty centaur. Indeed, and he certainly cannot. So the spear embedded in his side, the acid still burning away at his flesh, his longtime friend, first mate, and comrade, Polly the goblin, incinerated by his side, and with horrible brain damage wrought oh. by the centaur's hooves, he will crumple to the earth. Can I have Dagmar, please, roll me a dexterity oh, saving no, throw? Uh, uh oh, <laughs> Heavy corpse <laughs> dodging. <crushed> <laughs> uh, that's a 17. A 17, with surprising agility for a heavily armoured dwarf, <laughs> Dagmar is able to sidestep as the gigantic form of the 12-foot ogre collapses <laughs> on the space where he would have been standing. <laughs> I love it. Inspiration da Dagmar to the apparently... Yeah. Oh, inspiration right. to the DM. I'm going sure to use that. Excellent, thank you very much. Now, I... Dagmar apparently who is impossible to hit with anything. <laughs> no what I to... After Soldred's turn then, we move to... Let me get this right. Either Terminus or Dagmar. The only form left to fight is that of Kronar Ironshanks. Ooh. Well, can I jump in on this yeah, one, absolutely. Doctor? Because uh, what I am... Get... So I'm going to turn to... Uh, what's his name? Vol? Kronar. 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 Yeah, I'm going to turn to Kronar and just like run towards him and sort of give it, like, not a mechanical shove, but sort of, like, shove towards him and be like, yield, brother! Uh, so I'll do a intimidation. Can I do that? Yep, definitely. So you can either roll me intimidation or persuasion, whichever one is higher Ooh, for you. Uh, they're both plus two, so let, let, it feels like an intimidation. Uh, check. Cool. Roll, me, roll me intimidation. I will allow you to roll with advantage, given the shocking speed with which you have eviscerated <laughs> <laughs> Okay. And because like there's a cer there's a certain dwarven connection there, so like um, 
You called him brother. I assume you're speaking in Dwarvish, yeah, so yeah. roll with advantage. Okay, awesome. So so that was a 12, first one. I don't think that's going to cut it. Let's try again. Uh, 19, that's more like it. A 19 is pretty damn good. So, oh. And his saving throw against that is not <laughs> very damn good. So, like, he'll, he'll just you know, kind of step back as though for the first time he's been so preoccupied by trying to beat the robot to death with his hands. <laughs> he'll look, look around and notice for the first time that his allies lie dead around him. And with one last kind of half-hearted jab into the like the thing, there's a loud clang as he punches the steel defender. He'll raise his hands above his head. All right, laddie. Even this old long beard knows where he's beat. And he'll spit again to one side. All right. Well, I, well action for the party. You're you're no longer working on initiative order, so you made short order of the lucky donkey oh, trading company. <laughs> 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 the real villain of the piece, yes. Never mind this <laughs> mysterious Fortin Brass character. Uh, I'm glad we did what we came here to do, which is fuck up the lucky donkey. <laughs> <God>. <laughs> well, at least we didn't kill the unarmed dwarf. The unarmed dwarf. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're just beating up a to guy with his hands. the war crime indictments, yes. Yeah. Uh. Uh. It's, it's probably for the... I mean, who could have said? There might have been repercussions if the party had slain a member of Clan Ironshanks. Maybe there would have been political repercussions from that. Who, who knows? <laughs> Maybe there might yet be. But anyway, what <laughs> action from the party? Is there much left guess, Is yeah. there much left of the... Um, in, in McConaughey's kind of dissolving corpse, is there much of the boomstick left? Uh, you could roll me an investigation check to see if you can find anything useful from his remains. Uh, but you're specifically focusing on McConaughey's corpse. Yeah, that's what you're and with a roll of eight, I suspect I'm not going to find much. Not much. It seems to be that unfortunately. You know what? I'm, I'm going to use my inspiration to roll that actually before you say unfortunately anything. Okay. Well, that's slightly better. 14. A 14. You're able to recover his strange mechanical weapon. So it fell very near to the central campfire, but it seems that it has been spared the wrath of the flames. Uh, there is nothing left on McConaughey's person, so the acid has dissolved most of it away. There's a kind of travelling pouch that you can find 15 gold pieces in, but other than that, there doesn't seem to be much on his possession. So there's a small fletching knife, there's the ruined form of his stringed instrument, which Talamanca fired an arrow through. Hmm. Other than that, there's not much on his person. Wait, sorry, I think I missed that. What, so what, was the gun gone or useless or whatever? Oh no, it was there. Uh, so the gun fell just short of the central ah, campfire. Right. Thrown out there officially, I am proficient with firearms, <laughs> which, is, which is hilarious. Um, yeah. uh, can, can you roll me a knowledge arcana check? I can, and that's a good one for me. Not with that attitude. It's not. Oh no, that's a seven, not a one. <laughs> Fuck. Ooh, that's a twelve. <laughs> that's a twelve. A twelve. So, you Terminus has encountered these weapons before. In fact, he is he has training in the use of firearms. They are incredibly new. They are incredibly dangerous. They rely on a kind of black powder, which Terminus is definitely familiar with. So Terminus understands how gunpowder works, and he has seen weapons of okay. this type before. I'll, I'll pass that information around and be like, scanning, detecting unknown <laughs> weapon, detecting unusual weapon form. Okay, well, action for the rest of the party. What are you going to do with your prisoner? Um, I'm going to... Can I, can I cure wounds on myself? I can, can't I? Yeah. Cool beans. I'm going to cure wounds yep, on you myself. Can. Um, oh, thank Christ. What, did you roll well? I rolled well. I, I add 10 to, to my hit points. Wow, you rolled max. Nice. I did. Are you showing us the roll so we don't think you're jebbing it? <laughs> because <laughs> as much to make sure I'm on the right character. Fair. Okay. As, as Soldred kind of raises his hands up, there's like the sprightly, almost kind of half illusory forms of little sprites and fairies that will kind of cluster around him as his wounds close, and there's a faint childlike laughter can be heard in the air as he casts cure wounds. Okay. Ooh. Ah. <laughs> Sufficiently disturbing. How, how, how are you looking now, Soldred? I'm looking you... 12 out of 28. 12 out of 28. Okay, so Dagmar is going to come over and lay, lay hands on... Uh... On Soldred, so I will heal you for a further eight hit points, let's say. Terrific. As Dagmar lays his hand on Soldred's kind of big, horsey flank, his kind of hand glows a little bit, and he feels the power of his god, his dwarven god, just kind of coursing through him, the life force transferring itself into Soldred, who recovers a further eight hit points. Excellent. Ooh. Thank you. I'm back on 20, and I'm probably looking a lot less deathly. I've, got, yeah, <laughs> um, I've also got cure wounds if we need it, but I suspect now isn't quite the time. Nah, yeah, I, I, got I, got, I have another even smaller mechanical spider that can suit your wounds for me. So, <laughs> nice. are they like Russian dolls? Yeah, like, basically, I just Russian I keep, spiders, just yeah, more spiders. That's really out. Terminus's goal in life: is to, how many spiders? Like he's making like a turducken of mechanical spiders. <laughs> <laughs> that's disturbing. Also, I've uh, marked it. a spell slot. That means I've used it, right? Yeah. 
Outstanding. What? What action from the party then? So you've inspected. There's still plenty to do in the campsite if you would like. Mm. You still have your prisoner. What, what's the party going to do? But yeah. you are a little bit more patched up. Uh, whilst this was going on, uh, Kronar Ironshanks will stand with his arms crossed, scowling, clearly not enjoying being in defeat. Well. <laughs> Should have been a fucking loser then. Yeah. What I'm going to, what Talamanca is going to do whilst I, well, I would suggest that uh, Dagmar has a, has a chat with a new prisoner. But in the meantime, I'm going to uh, uh, do some investigation of some of the other barrels that are still uh, present to see okay. if there's any, uh, anything useful that we from can the find. <laughs> <laughs> Very well. Uh, t uh, Talabanka, then. Can Talabanka rule me a investigation check? Oh, I got a B. What's that? Oh, 20. Oh, that's 20. That's that's plus one. B is a nat 20, 20 on that dice, yeah. A natural 20. Got... Yeah. Okay, Talamanca, like, most of the stuff you go through is of weapons of good quality. So by popping open the lids of the barrels, most of it seems to be filled with axes, swords, shields, general weapons, which are of decent quality, but not substantially better than anything the party currently possesses. However, in one of the larger tents, underneath one of the bedrolls, you pull the bedroll aside, there is a small lockbox, which, as you touch it, springs open as your kind of scaly claws caress the side of it. Inside the lockbox... There was a black sphere of heavy iron with a kind of small length or taper of thread that extends from the top of the black sphere. Talamanca can't make heads or tails of this. Also in the same lockbox, there is a vial of clear liquid which smells faintly of almonds. And finally, within the same lockbox, there is a coin purse. Hmm. Okay. Uh, can, can I check inside the coin purse for potentially coin? <laughs> yep. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> or is that a risky game? <laughs> Uh, okay, I'm going to bring the lockbox out. Talamanca's like uh, min-max rolls have been fascinating me to me so far. Yeah. <laughs> there is no average. Yeah, it's, yeah. Uh, everything is either like godly precision or like three stooges with nothing in between. <laughs> I just imagine so Talamanca, who is... <laughs> Sorry, go on, go on, Bart. Uh, Talamanca just, like, the Betty Hill soundtrack plays constantly <laughs> during... <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so so I I am wise to my lack of intelligence, so Talamanca will bring this box out to someone smarter and hand it sheepishly towards them. I mean, you're the one with thieves' tools. Actually, I have thieves' tools, weirdly, because I have all the tools. I'll bring this lockbox out to Terminus, who looks like he can analyse stuff, hand it out with my arms outstretched with an expectant look in my glittering lizard eye. <laughs> <laughs> a lovely, lovely description. Uh, Terminus, so the lockbox is open. It seemed to spring open at the touch of Talamanca. In it, there is, as previously described, the vial of clear liquids, which even with the stopper on, there's a kind of smell of almonds that emits from the vial. There is the black sphere with what seems to be a taper or a small length of rope extending from the top of the black sphere. And finally, there is the coin purse, which now contains 79 gold pieces. Ooh, money. I guess I'll keep hold of that for the party. Um, can I investigate hey. the the liquid? First of all, can you smell the liquid? Because you don't breathe. I have I have olfactory sensors. Yes. Okay. Sensory array engaged. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Uh, roll me a knowledge arcana check then on the vial you said. Yeah. That would be twenty. Okay, you're able to easily identify the vial. This is a healing potion. So the smell of almonds is distinctive. Common amongst many healing potions, this is typically what alchemists just imbue the recipe with, so that it's common across most cultures. You do? Do you? Are you aware that in real he, life, no. almonds, almonds smell like cyanide, like cyanide smells of almonds? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes. This, yes. I love this story. So, um, the, the, there's actually a history behind this. The first ever game of Dungeons and Dragons I ever ran, I was unaware of the connection between the scent of almonds <laughs> and cyanide. So, uh, the first ever time we played D and D, there was the party uncovered. A, a bunch of potions, which were healing potions, which I described as the dungeon master is smelling faintly of almonds, and they're like, oh my god, he's given us a bunch of poison. <laughs> under, <laughs> under no circumstances should we drink these potions. <laughs> and uh, since then, it, it, I absolutely did not know that story, by the way. That wasn't like a setup for that. I, I didn't know. Yeah, so in, in the. Uh, did you say it was 75 quid in there as well? Uh, 79. 79. 79. 79. Oh, brilliant. I'll hang on to that healing Maybe. potion for now as well. I guess I can. Are you just taking all this shit for yourself? Yeah, I, I, no, I mean, I, I, I am... I suppose we're all kind of a bit healing, but I can deliver it to people through a series of increasingly yeah. small spiders and such. Yeah. So. <laughs> so you have one healer portion. Uh, with such a high roll, I'll let the Arcana check extend to the other contents of the box. So this... Ah, uh, the bomb. Yes, the, the Black Sphere... <laughs> You've seen these kind of things before. They are very new and very volatile, but this, bo this bomb, as you are able to identify, is basically packed with black powder. And obviously, when you light the taper, 
the taper will run down and the black powder will ignite. So you've never seen one of this size and design before, so you're not exactly sure how it will work or how destructive it will be. But Terminus understands what this is and the damage that it will do. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Um... Terminus, have you explained to us what the um, gun is? Yes. He'll, he'll uh, because I want one. to look for, um, you know, any cool arrows for my bow or spearheads. I'm guessing I won't find any because of what you've said earlier, but I, that, that's presumably what I'm looking for. So would I recognize black powder or would I just, like, have you said about the black powder? Because otherwise I would just look at it and just think it was dirt. Yeah, I, I'll have passed on the information about... about the, then yeah, I'll have been looking for arrowheads possibly. and spearheads. Um, do you want me to roll for that? Uh, roll me a quick investigation check then, uh, Soldred. There's... Lovely. Can tell a man cannot, like, make arrows out of people? Is that... I can't, well, <laughs> I'm, I, I'm building up to that, don't worry. <laughs> okay, good. Oh, God. A two. A two? It's not difficult to find... Even the roll of a two, it's not difficult to find arrowheads. So, like, these, these boxes are just open. Um, Soldred is able to take arrows to replenish his quiver if he wants to, but they're not particularly remarkable. They're of good craftsmanship, but nothing that seems to be like a super arrow of dragon killing or anything. <laughs> yeah, I'll just I can, I can make few. some of those if we have a long rest, though. I can make you some arrows of walloping. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I love artifices. They're so much fun. <laughs> okay. What are you doing with your prison? So you've picked yeah. apart the camp. You've seemingly looted the things that need to be looted. Uh, those who have obtained new objects. So the party has in its possession a healing potion and this strange black powder device. Mm hmm which you're informed by Terminus is incredibly dangerous. What's the party going to do next? Yeah. You still have your prisoner. Corner. I would like to so use my persuasion to ask him where these weapons were intended for. Roll me a persuasion check, but we'll need to see how he responds. 60. If I give you the information you're looking for, you promise to turn me loose? Absolutely. <laughs> is, is that the truth? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I, I have no interest in a pet. Jesus. Okay. Uh, he, oh, he rolled a natural 20 for his insight check, so when Soldier responds, he does, he seems to believe. Very well then. We'd set up a trade deal with one of my cousins from another clan. Now, naturally, trading unlicensed in the peace parts, particularly in human lands, is outlawed, particularly between other dwarves. Naturally, you've seen that trade will not be taking place. I'm sorry to have interrupted you. We had no reason to <laughs> trust that you weren't fe feeding the armies of... Uh... It's an not Gormangast, what's his name? <laughs> Fortinbras. No, Fortinbras. Fortin yeah. <laughs> uh, Fortinbras. And how cagey you were made us very nervous. Sorry to have interrupted your day. <laughs> <laughs> he literally killed three of his friends. <laughs> Minor inconvenience. Oh, have a point, have a point of inspiration, soldier. <laughs> We're Jeez. sorry we done a war crime. I feel yeah. Uh, he will mutter something un true. under his breath in Dwarvish. Anyone who speaks Dwarvish um, can understand the yeah. oath, because he's within your shop. Um, he's muttered an oath of vengeance under his breath. Oh. <laughs> Baffling, that is. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh oh. Um, Dwarves take that very seriously. So, like, um, roughly translated from the Dwarvish, the oath of vengeance translates as it's a good day for somebody else to die, is what he's Yes! Oh. <laughs> Um, wonderful. Now, I have but one more thing to ask of ye, even though you hold me entirely in your power. But brother, and he'll address himself to the dwarf, what are your names? And I'll be on my way. As per our agreement, I'm assuming you intend to honour it. Aye. So, I'm, I'm Dagmar, and these are my contenders. Dagmar. Very well. And with that, he'll kind of, he'll pull his crossbow over his shoulder, and unless anyone stops him, he'll begin making his way towards the road. I mean... No witnesses, or... Actually, no, <laughs> the simpletons already escaped, so... <laughs> <laughs> just, uh, yeah. Aye. This is where Soldred knocks his bow and just... <laughs> okay, yeah. and as the figure of Krodar Ironshanks, unmolested by the party, he kind of takes a wide berth around you, puts his back to Cragspar Keep. He will begin walking off, as I shall demonstrate here on the board. He makes his way down the highway and away. And for a dramatic sweeping shot, I will even bring in the roving cam. Nice. He is here, making his way down the highway. We pan back to the party around the well, campfire. 
in the murdered bodies of their enemies, which are beginning to smell a little bit. As the acid <laughs> continues to melt them, I am going to call a brief recess so that I, the dungeon master, can nip to the bathroom, and we will come back momentarily. Viewership, hopefully you're still with us. If you're enjoying the content, this madness where the party performs war crimes and kills innocent simpletons, or rather spares the innocent simpletons, but kills everybody else, please remember to like, share, subscribe. If there's other idiots in your life who will enjoy this Dungeons & Dragons content, be sure to share it with them, and we will resume shortly.